Hello and welcome to today's Shorts Roundtable. I'm Paul Sloop, the Short Films Programming Manager for the Cleveland International Film Festival, or better known as the Shorts Guy. We want to take a moment here to offer special thanks to PNC for sponsoring our Filmmaker Conversations content throughout the festival. On today's roundtable, we'll be joined by filmmakers from some of the short films included in Shorts Program 5. With that in mind, allow me to welcome our guests to today's conversation. Thank you all so very much for joining us today and welcome. And to get us started, I'd like to ask each of you to introduce yourself, your film, your role on the film, and also please let us know where you're joining us from today. Let's start with Justin. Hey, uh, Paul, thank you so much for, for having us. And um, I'm Justin Fair. I directed and produced Sloan Hart's Neck Face. I'm uh, calling in from New York right now. Hi, I'm uh, Ilir Blackshori. I... Uh... I am the writer and the director of the movie Clara with the Moustache, and I'm calling from Albania. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm Miriam Krauschop, the writer and director of Estilo Americano, and I'm calling in from Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Poppy Vanel Granger, and I'm the director and co writer of Two Sands, and I'm calling in from Australia. Hi, my name is Candice Corella, and I am the director of Unicorns, and I'm calling in from Los Angeles. Hey, Paul, thanks. I'm uh, Julian Doan, and I wrote, directed, and edited Raspberry, and I'm calling from Los Angeles. Excellent. So to get us started, I'd like to ask each of you uh, to share the inspiration for your film or what led you to become involved in the making of the film. I mean, what, what brought us here today in your film? Starting with you again, Justin. Uh, well, uh, my friend Ian Grody, he wrote the film. Um, I met him while uh, directing at NYU. We were doing like a little evening pairing like writers with uh, industry agents and, and that kind of thing. So he had written, uh, uh, if you've seen the, the movie and thank you if you have, uh, but it's basically like a string of monologues and he wrote three of them for a magazine, which he then translated into a stage play uh, which we then translated into a short film. Just to be clear for all of you, I have seen all of your films. Most <laughs> of them many times, so. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> uh, uh, my story actually started a long time ago. Um, it was from our own life experience. Uh, actually, uh, when the war started in Kosovo, I was only 12 years old and uh, I was in my own bubble world at that time. And you know, suddenly everything shattered and Clara came naturally as a result of imagination of a 12 year old child. So uh, through that reality, we created the entire war story that happened in Kosovo. Wow. It's a powerful animated film. Really Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so my film, Paul knows he's seen it's very political and uh, I really wanted to do something, you know, living in America during this climate. And I was just so um, amazed how, how our former president kept picking on Latinos and bashing them. And I really wanted to write about it and also about how divided Latinos are politically and where they stand. So um, I have a lot of Latino friends. I made Latino feature several years ago, Green Card Warriors. And I sort of continued building on that theme and the themes that I work on as a filmmaker and visual artist. And um, I also wanted to portray a middle class and educated family um, because I feel in, in media and entertainment, we always see the undocumented, the day laborer, the nanny. Uh, and uh, I really wanted to show a, a different side that is the majority of Latinos here, but don't, don't get the spotlight. And very well done at that. We all made our entire programming team in, commented on, yes, we like this being the way that this story is told. It was very well done. Thank you very much. Poppy. So Two Sets is written by uh, Cook, um, Man Manu and myself. Uh, so I met Cook when he was about 14 and he just moved to Australia. I was working with an intensive English centre doing art projects 
And Cook told me this incredible story of when he was in South Sudan and he got um, he was looking after some goats and one of them was pregnant, so he stopped to help uh, as the group was moving to another spot and then he got so involved in that that he lost everybody in his tribe and as an eight-year-old boy he was lost in the wilderness for a couple of days and, yeah, I won't ruin the story too much but some incredible things happened to him while he was out there and as he was telling this story to me it felt like a a good allegory for where he and all the other students were at as 13 14 year olds arriving in Australia for the first time and feeling a sense of being lost in the wilderness and it's an experience that I had as a 13 year old as well moving to Australia so we made um yeah that's that's the birth of the film very good, very good. Candice. Um, well, Unicorns was written by Leah McKendrick and brought to me to direct by the producer lead actress, Hilary Kerwin. And when I read the script, I was initially interested in directing this film because it, it was a very unique and unorthodox way to tackle a very serious subject matter, surviving depression. And the film also had light moments, which I really felt could be uh, beautiful visual scenes about two people from very different walks of life coming together, realizing they're not alone in their struggles. And um, I felt like it could provoke serious conversation on the subject matter, which I think is, we made just before the, the pandemic, but is very pertinent now. Um, and um, I knew it would be visual, and I was really excited to work with a bunch of amazing, talented females, and um, and so that's how I got involved. And, and I can tell you, every year our team faces brutal cuts at the end. There are films that we lose each year that just break our hearts, and on occasion, the next year we bring back a handful of them to reconsider, and that's what Candace's film is one of those films that we bounced back that we couldn't stop thinking about from the previous year. So we reached out and said, hey, let's um, let's reconsider this. And we got to play it this year. Thank so, you. I appreciate that. Year. Okay, Julian. Um, so Raspberry is also based on um, my own life experience. Of my dad passed away from cancer two years ago. And um, he was in hospice care for a couple weeks, and then me and my family um, stood by the bedside and watched him pass away one morning. Um, and I think I was sort of surprised by how kind of mundane and regular it was. Um, and so I wanted to try to like, A, capture like all the awkward energy that's in the room and then the kind of juxtaposition between like this highly emotional moment and this sort of everyday nature of everything. And then, um, you know, these these two um, people from the funeral home came to take his body away later that day. And I found it interesting, like, that the the internal struggle that you're, like, suddenly faced with when you have, like, all this pressure to say something really meaningful, um, you know, the last thing you're ever going to say to a loved one before, before you never see them again. And I thought that, um, I don't know, there was some comedy in, in trying to figure that out, like, I felt like there was absolutely nothing you could say that would sound that would sound right or sound good or fully capture like the uh, fullness of your love for this person. Yeah, I, I can tell you that the day that I saw your film was one of the days we were going to meet as a team to talk, and I couldn't stop talking about like there's a moment in this film, guys. When you see it, you're going to go, "Is this going to work?" And then everything that happens after that makes it like. I can't stop thinking about it. It was just perfect. So really great, great work. Thank you. Um, next up for all of you, what I'd like you to do is consider for a moment, if there was one story you'd want to share or uh, one thing you'd want our audience to know about the making of your film, there's always interesting things that happen in the process of making any short film. So what's the one thing you'd want our audience to know? And we'll start with Justin again. Well, I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm living like the theme of Julian's short and you know, trying to think of something good to, to tell you. But um, the, the short film, Sloan Hearts Neck Face, we actually filmed over several years. Um, we were filming it all together and uh, we lost Clara Mamet at the last minute. Seth Rogen stole her from us for Neighbors 2. 
and uh, I begrudged him for a little bit, but but I, I'd like to thank him now for uh, for taking her away and bringing her back uh, a year later, um, uh, because uh, I think we got a lot out of uh, that that space and time between. Um, yeah, very challenging and 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 spaced out, but uh, I guess if you've seen the film, you know that it's very. Um, episodic and it, it lent itself to that and uh, it lent itself to us having two different um, uh, directors of photography. We played into that and uh, yeah, I, I think it ended up being a strength in the end. So thanks Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, I want to share something um, about our film when we created the film we had a message to deliver to 31 million children across the world today that who suffers from war and violence and we had the story long before we knew animation so we started in the beginning to educate ourselves so we started to go to animation mentor we learned about animation character animation then we started uh, building the film so it was a process of learning and doing and building the film. Amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah, I think what, what was, well, we shot it literally a few days before the lockdown. So that was just like lucky. We're like, we have to do it now, but also because it's such a timely topic, right? We didn't want to mess around. And it's an ensemble cast of, of really top of the line Latino actors. And I think what's really special about this that they really wanted to play these characters because all of them could relate to the story personally and um you know this conversation it's it's a family piece right a family coming together over thanksgiving and then the whole stuff blows up but um they could really identify they're like oh my god i have a sister like that or this is what it's like at home so it became extremely personal for them and obviously that's why you cast certain actors because you you think that they're gonna relate to it personally but then to for them to actually say you know what this happened to me and i don't speak to my my brother anymore or whatever you know um, that was that gave it an extra level to me and also their commitment you know to do this so collaboration teamwork and getting the message out and i think uh, it worked out great great cast yeah poppy yeah, I think I want to talk about cast as well because um, for our film, uh, it's based on Cook's story. He's from South Sudan. And so we went to uh, a lot of different churches in Perth, South Sudanese churches, and did our auditions during their tea break. Um, so David Kutcher, the producer, was amazing at finding all these, all this young talent. And, um, yeah, when we met Garang, we knew straight away that he would be perfect for the role. Um, his parents had both come here as refugees, so it was really great to sit around the kitchen table with them and have them talk to Garang about what it was like for them. Um, so I think he learned a lot um, through doing the film. And it, he said it really gave him a lot of confidence. He was quite, you wouldn't know it, but he was quite shy when we started the film. And by the end, he was on the mic speaking to um, at the opening night and, yeah. <laughs> Great. Candace? You're muted, Candace. I'm sorry. That's On a okay. production level, I um, we had two days to shoot this film. We had five locations from Santa Monica to downtown LA. Um, and the locations I really wanted, um, are, we couldn't get permitted in time. And as everybody knows, we had to stealthily steal a few um so the planning involved in that was like a cia mission when you're you know doing stuff downtown los angeles but it was really fun and we planned everything really well and i had an amazing producer katie ware who navigated a shoot fraught with production hurdles oh, and we had malik yoba coming in from new york to act in the film but he could only work part of it oh and there was threatening rain so just trying to schedule our five locations with two days with one act. I mean, it was just, it was a puzzle piece, but it, it was so fun to make the movie. And I am so grateful it got made. <laughs> and 
So are we. <laughs> um, so, you know, this, obviously the film's personal, as I said, and um, <clears throat> we actually, there's like a lot of meaning in it for us. Um, the day that, like the day that uh, we got, we started pre-production on this film, um, my partner and also producer Brianna's, um, like a close friend died of cancer that morning. Um, and then later, you know, only a few hours later, we got a call from our other producer, Turner, um, that he had like a stage available in three weeks for us to shoot on. Um, so we had to get like the ball rolling really fast. And we had like this funeral that we had to go to in Denver. Um, I was, we, Brianna and I flew to this funeral and at the funeral, we found out that we lost this stage. We like lost this location. And I was a little like nervous about asking, but I ended up asking my stepmom if we could shoot in my father's house, um, which is where I always pictured it. Um, I was just a little nervous about, you know, kind of shooting the material there with her. Um, but she was totally down and she was actually really excited and <laughs> was like running around the house, like taking photos and stuff like that and asking to take photos with all the actors. Um, so, you know, the room that the film takes place in is like the same place that my father died. I mean, only like a foot to the left. Um, so it's a really like meaning filled film for us. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, allow me to thank you all so very much for taking the time to do this. Uh, for our audience, you know, our filmmakers are from all over the place. Elir stayed up late. It's like 1130-ish and where he's at and Poppy got up at five probably in the morning to join us at six o'clock in Australia. And we couldn't be more appreciative to all of you, not only for sharing your art, but for taking the time to talk to us today. So thank you so very much for being with us and sharing your great work. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, thank you guys. Yeah. In addition to thanking our filmmakers, we have to thank you, our audience, for joining us to, for today's Shorts Roundtable discussion. We wouldn't be here without your ongoing support to bring film home. We hope you'll consider supporting our challenge match again this year, presented by Cuyahoga Arts and Culture to support the future of our festival. Our goal this year is to reach $145,000, and we are so grateful for any amount you're able to contribute. To make a donation or to purchase tickets or check out our full schedule of filmmaker conversations, please visit us at clevelandfilm.org. With that, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll look forward to seeing you back here again very soon.